Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the search for MH370. I'm Geoffrey Thomas, and I'm delighted to say, joined by my co-host, Richard Godfrey in Frankfurt. Good morning to you, Richard. And good afternoon to you, Geoffrey. Thank you. Viewers, this episode is called Where Will Ocean Infinity Search? It's episode 288. MH370 disappeared over 11.5 years ago on the 8th of March 2014 with a loss of 239 lives. Four days ago on the 3rd of December 2025, Malaysia announced that Ocean Infinity will resume their search for the missing aircraft in the southern Indian Ocean at the end of this year on the 30th of December. The surface search in 2014 lasted 42 days and covered 4.7 million square kilometres. There were 345 flights, 29 aircraft and 19 ships involved. They covered an area 60% of the size of Australia. The ATSB led the underwater search between 2014 and 2017 that lasted 1,046 days and covered 120,000 square kilometres. Ocean Infinity offered in 2018 to search again on a no-find, no-fee basis. They covered 112,000 square kilometres in 105 operational days between the 22nd of January and the 7th of June of 2018. Earlier this year, Ocean Infinity returned to the MH370 search area. In 22 days, they covered approximately 10,000 square kilometres. 3.5 years in the southern Indian Ocean, over 200 million spent, but the main wreckage site has not been discovered. The mystery of the disappearance of MH370 has not been solved. Richard, where are Ocean Infinity going to search this time with the resumption? Well, if we go back uh, a year, um, Nathan Villay-Udan, who lost his wife on MH370, presented some slides from Ocean Infinity at the 10th Remembrance event in Kuala Lumpur in March 2024. The first slide we're showing uh, indicates the research summary uh, that Ocean Infinity uh, presented. They consulted three universities in Finland, Sweden, and the UK, uh, Alto University, Linköping University, and Liverpool University. They also asked the independent group, the IG, uh, myself, Captain Patrick Blelly and Jean-Luc Marchand for their views on where to search. The search restarted on the 23rd of February uh, this year in the IG area for five days and then Amada 7806 left for Fremantle for refueling and, and supplies. We're showing another screenshot of the Ocean Infinity research findings. And they say, most of the studies post-2018 concluded the aircraft lies relatively close to the seventh arc between the latitudes 33 degrees south and 36 degrees south. Uh, there was one exception noted, and that's uh, from my work on WISPANET. Uh, and that would make the potential search area uh, much smaller, they say. And in Whisper, we've pinpointed an area of 2,800 square kilometres at 29.1 degrees south, 99.9 .9 degrees east. And in a report titled Analysis of the Trajectory of Flight MH370, uh, which was written in 2023, Captain Patrick Blelly and Jean-Luc Marchand reconstruct a possible flight path for MH370. And one of their major con contributions is defining a new search zone of uh, around 1,200 square kilometers 
and that's between 35.518 degrees south, 93.025 degrees east, uh, down to 35.875 south, 93.039 east. And we're showing another screenshot of the Ocean Infinity search proposal, and that's uh, as of the 3rd of March 2024. The proposal at uh, that point was an Armada 78 vessel with a dual AUV configuration. And they would cover around 15,000 square kilometers of seafloor between latitudes 33 south and 36 south. And they would also fill in selected larger data gaps in their original uh, ocean floor survey. Mm. Now, Ocean Infinity made a presentation to the Malaysian Minister of Transport, Anthony Loke, on the 2nd of May 2024 in KL. So what was discussed at that meeting, Richard? Yeah, we're showing a picture of that meeting uh, with uh, Anthony Loke. And Ocean Infinity invited my co-author, Professor Simon Maskell, uh, who is their scientific advisor, uh, to that presentation with uh, the Malaysian Minister of Transport. And he is uh, seen uh, seated to the right of the minister, together with Pete Foley, who was the ATSB project director for the MH370 search, then Josh Broussard, the CTO of Ocean Infinity, then uh, Professor Simon Maskell from Liverpool University, uh, then the Commercial Director of Ocean Infinity, and representing the MH370 families, uh, Nathan Vallejo Dan and MK Tang. And at that meeting, Professor Simon Maskell explained whisper technology uh, at some length. What do the other experts say about MH370 search and whisper? Well, an independent aviation investigator for whom we have great respect is Captain Peter Hornfeld, better known as Mentor Pilot. And he has done a full documentary on MH370 and uh, several other presentations and uh, including an explanation of whisper and in his documentary on mh370 petter urges a new search in two small areas one identified by captain patrick blelly and jean-luc marchand and one uh, identified using the whisper technology I'm showing a screenshot of the two areas that he proposed uh, get searched. And we have frequently mentioned the Blely Marchand area in this channel. And uh, I've mentioned it also on my own uh, blog and list Blely Marchand area as one of the key hotspots to search alongside, obviously, the whisper based method and also areas proposed by the IG and other independent investigators. And I've published the Blely Marchand work also on my blog. So I advocate a search strategy that includes multiple hypotheses, uh, not just Blely Marchand, but also my own approach uh, with Whisper and uh, the IG and uh, the uh, approach based on the UWA, uh, uh, ocean drift analyses. In my view, because the various methods, drift analyses, whisper, aeronautical reconstruction, all have uncertainties, a prudent search effort would propose to search all these locations in a single search campaign. So the $64,000 question is, where do you expect Ocean Infinity to uh, kick this off, this resumption? Yes, yeah, so, uh, you can pay me the $64,000, but I won't uh, uh, get it right, I don't think. Mm. Um, 
Ocean Infinity are remaining uh, very tight-lipped about the details of where they will be searching. What we do know is in February and March uh, this year, Ocean Infinity searched, uh, started at the uh, independent group um, and then went to the Blely Marchand area. And uh, it lasted a total of 22 days uh, in covering a total of around 10,000 uh, square kilometers. And that's an average of 450 square kilometers per day. Now, in the, later this year and into uh, 2026, Ocean Infinity planned to spend 55 days of underwater search. So at the rate of 450 kilometers a day, they will cover an area of 25,000 square kilometers. So together with the 10,000 they've already done, that will be a, a final total of around 35,000 square kilometers and significantly more than the original 15,000 that they uh, planned uh, back in 2024. And in my view, this uh, is because Ocean Infinity want to accommodate all the expert views. We're showing a screenshot of the OI search area for 2026. I expect in, uh, Ocean Infinity to start exactly where they left off. Uh, that is at 35.228 degrees south. 93.665 degrees east and near the Blely Marchand area. They will slowly and methodically work their way northeast to the IG area and then to the UWA areas and maybe even as far as the Whisper area. If they only have two AUVs on board again, and cover 450 square kilometers per day, they will only reach uh, around 100 kilometers north of Broken Ridge. But this will cover the crash location marked UWA-1, proposed by the University of Western Australia and Professor Charita Patiarachi. And this is the priority search location defined by our colleague, Blaine Gibson. Uh, Blaine Gibson, as you know, has found more items of MH370 debris than anyone else and has inspired many others to search for debris on their local shores around the Indian Ocean. If Ocean Infinity have three AUVs, then they can cover 50% more ground, and that will include UWA2, and whisper uh, areas. Of course, Ocean Infinity can decide just to search particular uh, hotspots, but in my view, they will cover all the areas in a systematic and well-planned manner. Mm. Well, I think we're all going to be watching this intently, uh, where this ship, whichever ship they use, maybe, maybe it's 8605 that we think it might be, but we're going to be watching every every moment of, of what it does. Yeah, so it'll be fascinating to see their plan unfold. And, of course, we all hope they will be successful and mm. find MH370. Yeah, no matter where they, uh, no matter where it's found. That's the most important thing of the lot, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm 99% certain it's in one of the uh, areas defined by mm. the experts. Uh, mm. uh, so uh, I'm pretty sure they will be successful. I mean, over the years, there's been colossal amount of work done by private individuals like yourself into searching, into, into calculating where this aircraft is. And uh, th there's probably millions of hours of work that's gone into all of these different groups doing their own analyses and their own uh, work um, on on finding yeah. a, a hotspot, if you like. Yeah, I think um, there are literally uh, over 100 experts who have been working 
almost non-stop for 11 and a half years. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of hours uh, that sure people is. have put in. It is, certainly is. So, Richard, uh, we'll be back tomorrow, will we not, with uh, questions off this particular episode? Yes, and uh, a bit look forward to the viewers' comments and questions. And thoughts, absolutely. Although, uh, viewers, it will be a little bit later tomorrow night, so bear with us on that one. When I say tomorrow night, it's Perth time, um, so it'll be, it'll be a few hours later than normal wherever you are in the world. So, viewers, please do subscribe to us. Please do like us. Please keep those great comments and questions coming. And for those who are supporting this channel, our sincere thanks. We do appreciate it very much indeed. Um, so, Richard, thank you for your work on this. You're welcome. And, viewers, we look forward to your company tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>